Hello guys, uh, today we are going to discuss the estimation of iron using ammonium thiocyanate. It's a biochemistry quantitative kind of the practical in which we are going to estimate the amount of iron within the sample which has been given here. So here before to the experiment a small introduction. Iron is a mineral which is required by the human body or any organism which is having the red blood corpuscles where the heme iron molecule is going to act as the one of the transporter of the oxygen where this iron mineral is going to act as the one of the prominent mineral. So here it is going to act as the oxygen carrying protein whereas it is present in hemoglobin and myoglobin which is incorporated in the form of the transporter and also the muscle part of the muscle in the form of the myoglobin so when it there is the deficiency of the iron it can make a person to form the lazy and also very anemic because of this deficiency of the iron and so here how we are going to take the iron iron is present in our daily intake of the diet let it be any kind of the food in many foods the small amounts of the iron is present because of that we are collecting the supplement of the iron when we are having the food which is not rich or not having any iron itself then we are going to lead to the less in the concentration of the hemoglobin now here when you are going to consider hemoglobin it is the blood red kind of the fluid in the veins or the arteries of the body composed of four protein chains two alpha chains and two beta chains which each having the ring like heme group of iron atom so which binds the oxygen and reversibly the binding of the oxygen is reversibly where it is meant that it the oxygen binded is going to be delivered somewhere within the body tissues now here myoglobin is also having the iron mineral and it is going to bind the oxygen protein found in the muscle tissue and in almost all mammals it is distantly related to the hemoglobin so here this is the small introduction of iron molecule how it is related to the biochemical analysis why we are doing the biochemical analysis now the principle is the sample extract containing the ferric ions in its aqueous state reacts with thiocyanate ions now here if you take any sample let uh, as we are going to take in the quantitative estimations the references and also the sample so the references you know that they are going to present in the form of either the salts or the compounds if the compounds or the salts are having the iron as the tall mineral it is going to form the ionic form when it is comes into the aqueous state so here this aqueous state is ferric ion form that is fe3 plus in its aqueous state it is going to react with the thiocyanate here we are going to use ammonium thiocyanate as the one of the other compound in the aqueous state where both the ferric ions and the thiocyanate ions are going to react it is going to form a red colored complex so which has an absorbance at 480 <coughs> nanometer now here this at 480 nanometer in the calorimetry or the spectrophotometry we are going to measure the absorbance now the reagents required are stock ferric solution working ferric standard solution and four normality nitric acid and two molarity ammonium thiocyanate salt now here we have given the particular preparations of that particular compounds where here we are going to take 1 gram of the ferrous sulfate and we are going to dissolve in 5 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid and we are going to carefully make it in the form of the slurry and we are going to put it in 1 liter volumetric flask where we are going to rinse the beaker thoroughly 
few times with water before to the pouring of the slurry then we are going to make to the mark of one liter is with the distilled water and we are going to shake well else we are going to insert a magnetic stirrer bar and stir the solution to speed up the dissolving process so remember if we are going to one port one gram in 5 ml of this concentrated sulfuric acid it doesn't mean that the ferrous sulfate has got dissolved you have to do more stirring to dissolve the ferrous sulfate within this particular composition of preparation of the stock ferric solution further we are going to take working ferric standard solution where we are going to take 20 ml of the stock fe3 plus solution to 100 ml in volumetric flask with distilled water now here we are going to pour 20 ml of the stock solution into the 100 ml of the distilled water and we are going to shake well so that the concentration of iron in working standard should be 2500 microgram per ml further for normality nitric acid we are going to prepare as per given here where we are going to take for normality solution slowly and we are going to add 254.818 ml of stock solution into 250 ml of deionized water adjusting the final volume of solution to 1000 ml with deionized water so this is how we are going to prepare for normality nitric acid further two molarity ammonium thiocyanate solution will be prepared by dissolving 152.24 grams of ammonium thiocyanate in 1 liter distilled water we are going to go to get the 2 molar per liter ammonium thiocyanate further is the procedure now this is the procedure we are going to discuss this procedure in protocol now in protocol we see the number of the test tubes which we are going to take is about 8 including the test samples where the first will remain the blank where we are not going to take any reference or sample solution so it is going to remain blank and further we are going to take the reference 0.5 1 ml 1.5 ml 2 ml and 2.5 ml after that we are going to take two test samples where we don't know the sample concentration that is of 0.5 ml and 1 ml now you can see that the blank is having 0 micrograms of the ferrous or ferric ions the next 0.5 is 0.5 ml of the reference is having 500 1000 1500 2000 2500 respectively with their volumes now we are going to make the each test tube to the 7 ml of the volume so whatever the rest volume which is lesser to the volume of the references and the sample we are going to add so for the blank we will add 7 next for the reference 1 that is for this we are going to add 6.5 next is 6 for this 5.5 5 4.5 and for the test samples 6.5 and 6 now with this each test tube is having the 7 ml of the liquid with their respective compositions now further we are going to add 1 ml of 4 normality nitric acid to each of the test tube so after this step we are going to add 1 ml to e to each of this from blank to the till to the t2 sample further we are going to mix the content thoroughly and keep them for incubation at room temperature for 10 minutes so we are going to keep them stand by for 10 minutes at room temperature so that the incubation can takes place further we are going to add 2 ml of 2 molar ammonium thiocyanate solution to all the test tubes and we are going to observe for the color change so because of this there will be the color change to the red complex color so after this formation of the red complex color respective to the concentration of the amount of the ferric 
ions present in the solutions so the the according to that the complex red complex is going to form so after this we are going to see the absorbance or the od at 480 nanometer so what the readings we got is here that is 0.0, 0, 0, 0.15 0.30 0.45 0.50 0 0.33 0 0.68 so these are the readings now sometimes we are going to take two samples of t1 like t1 itself for two times that is the duplicate of t1 and duplicate of t2 so it is so because to confirm what the reading we got in the both are going to correspond to each other as we got the exact reading between the two duplicates one has been reduced so one has been considered and the other also the same t2 one t2 has been reduced one t1 has been reduced in the protocol so keep in mind when you are going to do the experiment you please have two duplicates of same sample of each so that you can confirm that what the reading you got is the correct because we don't know any approximate amount of the iron is present in this particular sample so these are the unknown samples well uh, coming to this slide in this slide we are going to subject the values in the graph where a standard line graph will be drawn where the absorbance or the od is going to be taken at 49 no, taken at 480 nanometer on y axis where the concentrations will be taken on x axis where the graph will help to identify the amount of iron present in the unknown solutions now here you can see the values so these are the concentrations where it starts from 0 to 2500 and the absorbance at 480 nanometer will be taken on the curve according to the concentrations 500.15 1000.3 and again 1500.46 and here this will be the distribution of the absorbance from 0 to 1 by 0.12345678 units so here when you are subjected the values of the absorbance of the concentrations in the curve the unknowns will be t1 and t2 that is 0.33 and 0.68 T1 is going to be intersected here where the absorbance will be taken and a intersection line will be drawn horizontally from y axis vertically from x axis where it is going to cross here. So here when it is going to, when it is going to cross the curve the whatever the perpendicular line falls on the x axis is going to give the concentration of this particular unknown solution t1 that is the test sample now the t2 the value of absorbance is 0.68 which is going to fall here and it is going to cross the uh, curve here and it is going to form the axis uh, perpendicular axis here so it is going to give the concentration values here so it is going to be 1000 t1 is going to be the 1075 and t2 is going to be the 2330 so these are further calculated where we are going to calculate for t1 here this is this section is for t1 sample this section is for t2 sample now in the t1 sample section 0.5 ml of the unknown contains 1075 micrograms of iron fe3 plus where therefore what will be the concentration for the 100 ml of diluted solution contains so here when you are going to consider 1075 will be divided by 0.5 and it is multiplied by 
100 so it is going to get 2,15,000 micrograms of the Fe3 plus or it can be <coughs> converted to 215 milligrams of the iron now when you are going to consider for the T2 sample 1 ml of the unknown contains 2330 microgram of the iron therefore 100 ml of the diluted unknown solution contains like 2300 divided by 1 into 100 that is going to be 2,30,000 micrograms or can be converted to 230 micrograms of iron now here why here it is 0.5 and here it is 1 it is here it is 0.5 because it is the half ml of the sample has been taken here in t2 sample 1 ml of the sample has been taken so here 0.5 is the ml of the solution which contains this so we are going to take this particular 0.5 here 1 ml is the sample which we are taken so we are going to take 1 ml here so the result is the concentration of iron in the given samples found to have around 215 milligram here it is 215 sorry for the wrong typing and 230 milligrams of iron per 100 ml so this is the brief explanation of estimation of iron using ammonium thiocyanate and uh, i request the viewers and the regular unique followers to subscribe to our channel and to press the bell icon so that you get the notification whenever we are going to upload the topic so if you have any doubts or any clarifications you can write in the comments and uh, if you feel these slides are good enough for you please appreciate us uh, with a good feedback and also please help us to get more subscribers by uh, where we request you to ask your friends or put a word to your friends to subscribe to our channel and also share these particular links with your friends through social media network and also through the all chat medium apps thank you very much for watching this particular topic and be regularly updated with big book by pressing the bell icon before that please subscribe to our channel thank you